A former professional cage fighter, stabbed a beautician to death in her home, before he went into the street and knifed a stranger. Andrew Wadsworth, 37, subjected Melissa Belshaw, 32, to a prolonged and remorseless attack, and then left her in the corner of an upstairs room underneath some clothing. Wadsworth, who had been released on license from prison, also allegedly threatened to kill Ms. Belshaw's 13-year-old daughter, holding a knife to her throat before a passerby heard her cries of distress and smashed open the front door to rescue her. The teenager had earlier raised the alarm, by calling police from inside the property before her phone battery ran out. Still armed and dangerous, the defendant later came out of the terrace house and pinned a neighbor to the floor that was trying to help and he repeatedly stabbed him. Only the timely arrival of police saved the man's life. The defendant surrendered when an officer deployed a taser and he was taken into custody. Attempts were made by emergency services to revive Ms. Belshaw, but she was pronounced dead at the scene on the afternoon of May 20. A post-mortem examination revealed she sustained a series of devastating stab wounds, delivered with severe force and she had bruising around her upper body, consistent with being manhandled. Prosecutor, Mr. Story, said Wadsworth and Ms. Belshaw had argued the night before at her home, after taking cocaine and drinking alcohol. Wadsworth accepted during police interviews that he killed Ms. Belshaw but claimed he lost his temper and stabbed her within a minute of what he said were shock disclosures from her about her sex life, and a setup arranged by her in which he was robbed and injured. Prosecutor, Mr. Story said the defendant was relying on a partial defense of loss of control. He told jurors, in response it is important for you to know that the prosecution contends that, even if true, these claims do not amount to a sufficient basis for claiming he justifiably lost control of himself. Wadsworth, of Wigan, denied murder, attempted murder, and making a threat to kill. Former cage fighter Andrew Wadsworth has been sentenced to life in prison to serve a minimum of 32 years. He showed no emotion as the judge passed sentence. Amy Lee and Stringfellow was a former soldier who was fatally beaten and stabbed in June 2020 by her ex-boyfriend, while he was on bail for assaulting her previously. Amy Lee and lived in Doncaster. She was 26 when she died. Terence Papworth, 45, used a vodka bottle and ornamental sword in the attack against Amy. Mr. Papworth had been charged and released on bail over an assault on his partner a month earlier. Coroner Louise Slater recorded a conclusion of unlawful killing. A post-mortem examination found 58 different injuries, including a stab wound to Ms. Stringfellow's neck, and fractures to her cheek, jaw, and eye sockets. Amy was a former army reservist, who had served in Afghanistan. She had met Mr. Papworth in October 2019 and got engaged two months later on New Year's Eve. Ms. Stringfellow's mother, Jacqueline Farham, said Mr. Papworth had initially appeared to be perfect and she had treated him like one of the family. Mr. Papworth was charged in May with assault after he allegedly threatened Ms. Stringfellow with a gun. He was bailed on the condition he would not have any contact with Ms. Stringfellow, and was released to appear at court again in July. But on the 5th of June, Ms. Stringfellow, who had told her mother she was going to stay with a friend, went to Mr. Papworth's home in Doncaster. When officers were called to the house shortly before midnight they found her motionless and covered in blood in an upstairs bedroom. She was pronounced dead shortly afterwards. Two small silver ornamental swords were found next to the bed and there was broken glass on the floor. Pathologist Dr. Charles Wilson, who performed the post-mortem examination on Ms. Stringfellow, said she died from a sustained and forceful multimodal assault. Mr. Papworth had left the house before officers arrived and gone to his mother's home before handing himself into police. He also called several people to confess, telling one friend I've killed her, I've done it, I've had enough. Recording her conclusion, coroner Mrs. Slater said, Amy Lee and was obviously very much loved and cherished by her family and friends and clearly will not be forgotten. Mr. Papworth died in Leeds prison in November 2020 an officer entered the cell and found Mr. Papworth hanging from the window. The officer shouted for assistance and radioed a medical emergency code. Staff did not try to resuscitate Mr. Papworth as it was clear he was dead. I don't believe a f word that comes out of that boy's mouth. I have to beat the f 
living daylights or, or out of him for him to tell me the truth and he still don't tell me the truth he only tells me the truth when he thinks i'm gonna kill him like when i get a knife out like when i stab him like oh i just i just don't get this kid but obviously i have no limit when i get angry and like obviously he said that i need help with that because people are generally saying to me one of you are going to end up dead like and I fully believe that I'm quite capable of killing him if he hurts me again. And, or I'm going to end up being in prison. An OnlyFans model has been jailed for life for murdering her ex-boyfriend, whom she stabbed in the heart with a kitchen knife. Abigail White, 24, stabbed Bradley Lewis, 22, at their home near Bristol, after he ended their relationship earlier that day. She made £50,000 in one year working on the online streaming platform, where users can buy and sell content, and alleged Mr. Lewis had been controlling with the money she made. Mr. Lewis had left the family home and was staying with his mother at the time as their relationship was strained. In the days before White killed Mr. Lewis, she had stabbed him in the arm, and on another occasion, he ran a friend and said, Help me Sophie, she's trying to kill me, she's trying to stab me, she keeps beating me up she's hurting me. A post-mortem examination found he had suffered a single, fatal wound, at least seven centimeters deep, to the chest, that entered his heart. On the day of the attack he told Ms. White that he no longer wanted to be with her. They later met friends in a pub where White started a fight with some of the other drinkers. The court heard White had drunk a bottle of wine as well as several other drinks and had taken a small amount of cocaine when she threw her drink over a man in the pub. Mr. Lewis and White left the pub together and minutes after they arrived home, she stabbed him. A neighbor called 999 after she heard White screaming and when she entered the house she found Mr. Lewis lying on the kitchen floor. White told her neighbor Mr. Lewis had injured himself, the court heard. The model then phoned a friend and again told them and the police that Mr. Lewis was responsible for the stabbing. White later admitted she had stabbed him. In court she said she had only intended to shock and scare Mr. Lewis with the knife. We were arguing, and he was pushing me and were in the hallway. I went into the kitchen, and I saw the knife on the side, White said. I picked it up and walked back towards Brad. I went over to him to shock him, to scare him with the knife and before I knew it, I had stabbed him. I picked up that knife in anger and I was upset, but I didn't want to hurt him or kill him, she told the jurors. White accepted she had lied in the aftermath of stabbing Mr. Lewis but denied she was trying to protect herself. She initially told police she had not stabbed him on the 25th of March but later admitted manslaughter. White will serve at least 18 years before she is eligible for parole. After sentencing, Mr. Lewis's father, Steve said he did not feel that we have received justice as we have now got a life sentence. Brad's death has brought so much sadness, not just to his family but the many people that knew him.